Hey everyone, uh, Mr. Mo here. Welcome to the uh, Solving a Ruby's Cube with Mr. Mo Lab. Um, can everybody hear me? Okay. Just want to make sure we got sound check and everything is good as far as that. Can you all hear me? Somebody? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, um, welcome again to the Solving a Ruby's Cube with Mr. Mo. Um, this is a class that I've actually taught here in Columbus um, for several years. Um, and it's usually those who are really committed and understand that you're not going to be able to solve it in one sitting, but that you're going to have to understand the process for solving it. And then also um, you're going to have to practice. OK, so um, I want to make sure you understand that and that you're committed to at least doing that as we move forward. OK, so this class actually is a four session class. Each session, we're going to learn a different step for we're actually uh, solving the Rubik's Cube. And I'll also, if you join the class, which I'll make live after this session, I'll post any of these live videos and all of the slides that we go over in that session so that you'll be able to access them, review them whenever you need them, okay? So um, again, stay committed to the process. It is a process and then you must practice. So hopefully you all have a Rubik's Cube in front of you, maybe one you had sitting around or one that you borrowed from a family member. And if you have an opportunity, if you don't have one now, hopefully go out and grab one. They're relatively inexpensive. One of the other reasons that we, we like to teach this. Um, but again, and hopefully you, you'll be able to learn uh, how to solve a Rubik's Cube. OK, so now the first session is very intense in terms of like going over some materials that we have, we have a solid foundation um, for moving and solve, moving forward and solving the Rubik's Cube. Um, understanding what the Rubik's Cube is, how it moves, some of the notation involved for understanding the different moves and what they call algorithms. And then once we understand those foundational things, we can build on top of that to actually learning to solve the Rubik's Cube. OK, cool. So let's get into it. I'll actually I'm going to pull up my slide presentation here. Well, first, I, let me show you my cube. So I have my cube here. My, this cube is actually called a Go Cube, okay? So um, it's a connected cube. So you, there's actually an app that you can use that will help you solve it if you wanted to on your iPhone or iPad or Android phone. Um, so actually, probably the first thing I should do is actually solve this cube. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna step through it and I'll kind of tell you the things that I'm doing as I step through it. And you may not be able to recognize what I'm doing as I move, make the moves, but just so you understand. So first step is always to solve this white bottom here. OK, and it's really you're solving this bottom entire bottom layer. OK, so as I go through it here, um, your first thing you want to do is solve what they call the white cross. OK, so you see here I have the white cross solved on the bottom, um, but that's because I have these edges here, too. You see the green edges match with the green center, orange, blue, and red okay and then you have the white cross on the bottom then you have to fill in the corner pieces for uh for that layer uh, so i'm just gonna go around and do that for each corner piece and again we'll get into the details of how to do this uh more specifically as we go along okay and so as you see the bottom layer is solved so this entire layer is solved if you look around, okay? So it's not just the face. You don't have to, you can't just solve the face. You have to solve the entire layer. So let me, let me actually put my camera down so you can see this a little bit better. So it's centered, is that better? All right, so, so then we need to solve these edge pieces here, okay? And so what I'm doing is I'm recognizing what I need to do each layer by layer. And then I'll step through what I call the algorithms for that layer. And then as I go through piece by piece, we're able to solve the Rubik's Cube, okay? Okay, now you can see I have the entire second layer solved right here, this middle layer across, and then the bottom is still solved, okay? So now I have to work on this top layer. Okay, so I'm solving for what they call the yellow cross there. Okay, now, uh, final thing is as I need to do the corners on the top layer. 
and then I have to flip the corners. And then there it is, okay? So step by step, um, solving it. And you can do this every time if you follow the process and you understand exactly what we're doing, okay? All right, so, and we're gonna learn that over the next few months. So first things first, let's get into um, our presentation here. Okay, one second, yep. Can you all see that presentation there? All right, cool. So let's see. So how to solve the Rubik's Cube. Now this method, because there are different methods I'm teaching you is called the beginner's method. And I'm gonna try to step through this pretty quickly because I don't want to uh, bore you all with all the details, but I still think you need to understand this. And again, this will be on the website. Um, so you'll be able to access it whenever, okay? So why are we learning to solve the Rubik's Cube other than the fact that it's fun and it's something that, you know, we can share with our friends and families? Um, and what does it have to do with engineering? Um, one of the first thing is it increases what's called your spatial intelligence, right? So and why do we need to increase that? Well, spatial intelligence involves how well you're able to visually process information and to think about things in your mind and uh, able, uh, you know, how well are you able to manipulate that, transform it uh, in your mind's eye? So imagining, um, you know, how, uh, what a, what something looks like in three dimensional space. OK, so why do you need to increase that? Well, if you see here, these are some of the careers that really require people to have a high spatial intelligence to perform at a good level. So scientists, engineers, even artists, builders, architects, and if you're getting into computer science as well, okay? So, and the Rubik's Cube is the perfect exercise machine for increasing and man maintaining your spatial intelligence, okay? So, let's look here. So, if you, as you can see, hold on, let me change my... As you can see here, here's a Rubik's Cube. If we were to take it out and unfold it side by side, it would look like this. This is a, what a standard cube would look like. But then if you look like at, an, at a part, like this is a blueprint of a part, you'll notice there are also six sides here, okay? And so this is kind of how you see that relationship between understanding a Rubik's Cube and understanding engineering drawings and being able to, to, to uh, create blueprints and things like that, okay? So, First thing to understand, this is important, that the cube is not magic. It is an actual mechanism, meaning that it, it follows certain guidelines, certain rules, okay? Um, and, and if you understand what those rules are, then you'll understand how a cube is able to do what it's, what it's uh, able to do, okay? So first things first, a cube really only, it has six sides, but each side is determined by the middle piece, okay? As you can see here, this middle piece doesn't move relative to an orange piece, okay? Or to a yellow piece, or on the opposite side, a white piece, okay? So those pieces stay where they are relative to each other, okay? So you can move the edge pieces around, the corner pieces, but these middle pieces, they don't move around. Everything else moves around those middle pieces, okay? Here's another example or an image of that. And so again, back to this idea that the cube is a mechanism and not magic. So every cube has 12 corner pieces and these are the corner pieces. A corner piece has three colors on it, right? Um, uh, well, I'm sorry, you have, uh, you have 12 edge pieces and eight corner pieces. That's a typo there, okay? Um, and so every corner piece has three colors on it. Every edge piece has two colors, okay? So one, two, and then a corner piece, one, two, three. And then you have six center pieces, okay? Um, you have your, your standard colors. And again, this color, this side is actually determined by the center piece, okay? So this is the blue side. This is the red side, yellow side. And regardless of what color these edge pieces and corner pieces are, this center piece will tell you what color it's supposed to be when, you're, when you saw it. So here's some notations. So notations are good because once you start to learn what are called algorithms, so algorithms are really just a series of moves, okay? So turn it this way, turn it that way, then do this, okay? Based on the a color combination that you see in front of you on your cube. So as you can see, U here 
means turn the upper surface or the upper layer uh, a clockwise, okay? B is that back layer turning it clockwise. So every time you see this letter, that means a clockwise turn of that layer, okay? So front, F for front, left and right, down, up and back, okay? And then a clockwise turn. So if you see an F and then a little, what they call a prime symbol, like looks like a little dash or an apostrophe, then that means you turn it counterclockwise versus clockwise, okay? So something to remember. Um, let's see, all right. So now we're gonna use these notations here, which is really the same thing, okay? So you see, uh, if you're looking at your cube from the front, R means turn the right um, layer clockwise, okay? And RI or R inverse means you turn it back towards you or counterclockwise, okay? And you'll become familiar with these as we go through them. But these, once you see these little images and the notation along with them, if you follow them, you'll be able to actually solve the Rubik's Cube, okay? And again, it takes practice. If you ever heard the phrase called uh, muscle memory, that means that if you have, um, once you actually start to move it, your body will, will become adjusted to the actual movements and you won't even have to uh, remember exactly what notation uh, allowed you to get that, okay? So seven steps in the beginner method. First, solve the white cross, which is typically on the bottom. Um, uh, then you solve the white, the white corners on the bottom, the bottom layer. And then you have that first layer solved. Then you wanna move to the second layer. Okay, that's when you solve and you put in the edges, edge pieces for the second layer. Then you wanna solve the, the top cross, which is yellow. Uh, then the top air, top layer edges, top layer corners, and then you want to put orientate the top layer corners. Okay, so again, uh, it seems like a lot, but once you actually start to get into it and uh, start to understand how your cube moves, uh, this really you. We use this method because it allows for memorizing of fewest algorithms. Okay, so meaning like you only need to memorize a few of them. Uh, and then you'll be able to solve really any cube combination, okay? So again, here's uh, the first step here. You solve that white cross. This here is not solved, okay? You see a white cross here, but it's not correct because these two colors are not the same. So this, this blue color needs to be orange for it to be solved like you see right here, okay? So here you have the white cross up top. Then you also have the edge pieces where they belong, where they match the center pieces, okay? All right, so this is incorrect. So I've seen a lot of students say, hey, I solved this white cross, but it's not right because you don't have these two colors matching, okay, like you do over here. So this is correct, this is incorrect, okay? So when we say solve the white cross, make sure it looks like this, all right? Then step two, uh, this is when we solve the bottom corners, okay? So when we put these corner pieces here, uh, as you can see here, this piece comes up here and then you have that bottom layer solved and then you're able to move on to the second layer, okay? All right. So now session two, we're not gonna go into, okay? So again, this class is really only meant to be about 20 to 30 minutes long, uh, an introduction. Then I'm gonna put these on to the website and I'll make sure to invite you all to that. Um, if you look under the... Um, I think we're gonna launch a new a new section called Fun Brain Builders. Um, and then you'll be able to look in there. You'll be able to see this uh, presentation with all the steps and kind of go back over, okay? So uh, let me X out of this. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix up my cube and then I'm going to try to bring my camera around so that you can see from my perspective. Uh, how I solved the first two uh, layers. I mean, the first bottom layer, the white cross in the corners, okay? So that's all we're gonna focus on this session is the bottom is the bottom white cross in the bottom layer, okay? And uh, once you get good at that, if you practice from now until next week, then we'll move on to the next step, okay? So I want you to get really good at trying to solve that bottom white cross in the bottom layer, and then we'll move on to the next step, okay? So. All right. Okay, so move my keyboard. Okay, can you see that here? Is this 
Now, in your view, is this, um, this is my right hand. Can you see that as my right hand? This is right. Cause for me, it's showing up left, but for you, it's right. Right. Okay, cool. Cool. Let me move this wire here out the way. All right. So again, here's the white side. Okay. Now the white side is always opposite the yellow side. Blue is always opposite green. Orange is always opposite red, okay? And they never move relative to each other. They're always opposite each other, okay? And that's important, okay? So, when I'm, so here's yellow. I know white is on the bottom if I'm looking at it that way, okay? So the first step, we always say solve the white cross. Now, in theory, you can solve any color first. We always choose white because it's easier to find uh, when you're looking at a cube. Um, so we always choose white. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna solve the white cross. Now, how do I do that? All right. Now, th this first step is a little bit weird for uh, first time cubers. We call them cubers to figure out because it doesn't. I don't give you any real steps. You have to actually understand kind of what you're doing. All right. Um, it's it's called being uh, it's in intuitive. They call it. Okay. So. As you can see, I know these white edge pieces all need to come down here on the bottom, okay? So as you can see, you really have to just look around your cube. So as you can see, I know this piece goes here, okay? And then if I turn that surface, it'll bring it down to the bottom, okay? So this is kind of where you'll have to practice and understand what's happening uh, with your cube intuitively, okay? So now I see the white and red piece, all right? So what I wanna do is, uh, well, let's see. So I want to bring everything down here to the bottom. I know, see, if I look to the opposite side, I have a white piece here, okay? A white and green piece. So now I know that I can turn this to the green piece here and match it up. And then if I flip it all the way down to the bottom, it'll match up, okay? So right here, all right? So let me adjust this a little bit. Okay, so now I have these two pieces, these two legs of the white cross are solved, okay? Um, so now I need to do the red one, okay? Now, a lot of these moves, you really won't understand how to do unless you practice practice this session, okay? So uh, again, get your cubes out and try to solve the white cross. Then once you practice that, you'll start to understand how these parts are moving around the cube based on what you need to do. Okay, so like I know that if I turn this and then I turn it back and then down, that I will get that down there, okay? And these are, again, things that you'll have to practice as you go along. Um, the next move, so now I only have one more. I have the three legs here. And then I already see just by chance that this blue one is already pretty much solved. I just need to turn it to bring it down to the bottom like that. And then we have the white cross solved. You see the white cross? And then the edge pieces are matching the center pieces all the way around, okay? So now the white cross is solved. And now what I can do is I can put these, now I'm looking for the white corner pieces, okay? So I need to put bring them down here into their appropriate location. So if I'm looking here in this corner piece, I know I need the white piece the the red and the blue corner piece these the corner piece i'm looking for will have all three colors which i see is already up above here and again these these just happen to be there because it'll be there's so many different combinations you just have to follow the steps and, and there's no telling where a piece will be okay but i it happens to be up there and so i know if i move that out the way over here and then turn this piece up then move it back and then turn it back down it puts it down there in that corner, okay? And so um, now I see another piece here, orange, blue, and white. And so I look for that intersection between orange, blue, and white, which is over here. And, so, and my, my corner piece is over here. So I need to bring it over above. I move it out of the way, turn that side up, slide it into place. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll do that again. I put it above where it's supposed to go, okay? then move it out of the way so that when I turn it, it doesn't move it. Then I can move it back. And then when I turn that back down, it puts it into place, okay? Again, these are these are moves that you'll have to practice, okay? So pay attention to what I'm doing. And then when you get your cube, try to focus on doing what I'm doing, okay? So 
I got the white, red, and green piece. I want to find the corner piece where those three colors intersect. Put it above it, right? Like I just did there. Put it above where it's supposed to go. Okay, good. You saw at the bottom. Move it out the way. Bring it back into place and then back down, okay? And then I got one more corner piece I need to solve for. It's over here. I see it. I move it. Bring it above. This one, because the white part is above, I have to do uh, two moves. All right, to put it on the side, bring it above, move it out the way, turn that side up, put it in a place and then bring it back down. Okay. So you see this entire bottom layer is now solved using, uh, using those two steps. Okay. Good. All right. So that's all we're going to focus on for this session. Okay. Um, I wanted to make sure you saw that the, 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 um, the slides there and then we really just want to, and the reason we only, we take it step by step because you want to master this part first before we move to the next step. Okay. So that it's not too much information for you, um, but just enough so that you're able to, to take it step by step. Okay. So for the next week, until we have our next session next week, focus on solving the white cross with, and then putting in your corner pieces. Okay. And then next week we'll move on to the next step, which is pu putting in these edge pieces here for the cube. Um, and then we'll move each week uh, progressively up a couple more layers until we're able to solve it. And then hopefully in the fourth session, we'll have, um, let me move this back. We'll have a competition. If we, if we have enough of us that are good enough at solving it, we'll try to have a little competition to make it a little fun. Uh, all right, there we go. Okay, so I see I got a few questions here, okay? Uh, let's see what we have. Oh, well, how long will this take? <laughs> um, it'll take, um, well, in terms of how many sessions, well, we're gonna go through it in about three sessions, okay? To where we go through the entire cube. So this is session one, where you learn to solve the bottom layer. Now, between now and next week, I want you to practice every day for at least 10 to 15 minutes solving the white cross and the entire bottom layer, okay? I'm gonna put the slides on the website as well. Uh, in our lessons and shows, you'll see it. Um, so you can look at the slides and go over them again. And then I'm gonna put also in that section what I call my one sheet guide, okay? So if you're able to get through that first uh, layer and you're like, hey, I wanna challenge myself a little bit more, I'll have that one sheet in there that takes you through it, all seven steps of solving the Rubik's Cube. You'll be able to follow that um, all the way through to the end if, if you so choose, okay? Um, but again, it requires a lot of practice, okay? So if you didn't get it at first, I see that. Uh, don't worry about it. Again, it'll all start to make sense as you play around with the cube. I know it's confusing. It was confusing for me as an adult too when I first started. But the more I practiced trying to do those simple steps, the more I started to understand, okay, if I turn the cube like this, then this piece will move over there, okay? So all you're doing, remember the pieces never change, okay? Um, all you're doing is putting pieces back into place. So stop thinking about colors, because that's, that's kind of what confuses a lot of people. You're trying to solve the colors, so you, you like I've seen kids, they'll say, hey, I solved this side, but it's not really solved because this bottom layer is not solved. Now, you may have all the white pieces there, but they're not where they're supposed to be. OK, so you're putting pieces back exactly where they're supposed to be. Each piece has a home spot. And all you're doing when you're learning these algorithms is putting each piece exactly where it's supposed to be. OK, so forget about solving colors and start to think about I'm solving piece position putting pieces back in the position that they're supposed to be around the cube, okay? So hopefully that's not too confusing for you. Again, play around with the cube with keep in mind that you wanna try to solve that bottom layer. Review the slides again if you get a chance. I'll make them public later today. And then um, really practice, 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 okay? That's the key point here, practice, all right? So practice what I'm teaching you. Try to understand again, believe me, the more you play around with the cube, the more you'll start to understand uh, how everything moves uh, and it'll make sense. Once you understand again, that it's a mechanism and that it's not magic, all right? Cool. Um, 
So if we don't have any more questions you want to drop for me in the chat, go ahead before we log off here. Again, I'm going to make this live uh, with the slides and my one sheet solving guide, which everything is right there. It has is, is broken out into like a if this, if you see this, then do this move. OK, and so it's pretty straightforward, but it does require that you practice and that you're able to read the algorithms, which are pretty straightforward as well. Um, and then once you start to do it, then you'll be able to solve the cube uh, over and over and over again. And then you'll work on uh, you'll move from solving it to like getting better times. OK, um, ultimately. So uh, any other questions? If no other questions, again, thanks for joining me. Again, we want to keep these sessions to about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, once I post it and make it live on the website, if you have any questions, post them in the in that class, and then I'll answer them uh, as best I can. And if and if need be, I'll, I'll put up a video if I have to, uh, to answer your question to kind of walk you through some of that, okay? So I want to make sure that you're supported as you go through this journey. I know that if you practice and you understand the process, you'll be able to solve the Ruby's Cube here in the next couple of weeks without any problems at all, okay? So thank you for joining me. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next class.